because I hurt my shoulder and uh, I got to get a doctor to do an MRI. I got the pants a couple weeks out, so I'm like, man, I can't. I was like, I don't want to hear no bad news right now. We'll do it afterwards. Like right, right now, there's like three guys in the division. We start off as four, but now it's just, it's, then it went to two, now it's up to three. And I know, man, for the most part, I like one of the guys I know is very good, second ranked in the world in my division. Other guy I don't know. The good thing about the three division, three man division, I'm gonna assume I'm gonna be one of the lower seeds, which I'm fine with that. The way the IBJJF works is it's single elimination. So, but if you if it's a three man and you get one of the lower seeds, which I, I'm sure I'm gonna be, if I lose that first match, I get an opportunity to fight the guy that's kind of on the rat tail, maybe get to the final. I'm not thinking like that, but you never know what's gonna happen at this level, man. The guys are good, you know. Um, I don't know anything about the other guy, but at some point you gotta believe in your jiu-jitsu. You know, he's going out there, I'm sure he's training, just like I'm training, so we're gonna see what happens. My man Wolf said, he's getting the ball. Endurance. Endurance. I don't live super heavy. Yeah. I do just enough, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's about endurance, man. About the endurance. Strength over the long arm and figure out a way to mask this shoulder. But I'm not even gonna make no excuse. Everybody that does this has something going on. You know, so I'm, I'm not anything special. I'm sure everybody got some knocks and some things if you've been doing this too. People look at me crazy when I do that exercise. It's, yeah, but still. It's a snap down it's not, yeah. exercise. I know it's a tricep machine, but I want more of a snap down since so part of my takedown is to shoot double legs. Snap down, so you see this piece won't look too weird. Now when I'm working with my squeeze, you know, uh, you gotta work your squeeze in case you get the guillotines and this ball. It's a weighted ball. He said he wouldn't do it. So it's just tough. I'm gonna squeeze it for a few seconds. I'm gonna try to break this thing. Yep. Brito says 15 seconds of his fight. So you go as hard as you can for 15 seconds, but that's how a fight is. When you scramble, you slow it down. Chest straps. You know what happens? People like to critique your form. Yeah. But I'm, I'm not a bodybuilder. Right. I'm not a guy that does weight. I do it for functionality. Yeah, fun. I do it to help my jujitsu. So I don't care about nothing else. Like that. So it's funny because typically I'm in here with a couple other students and we'll do like, uh, for example, we'll like stand up in the car with a, like, like we're doing a. Uh, Deadlifts. If you're like, oh, you're formed. No, I'm working on standing in the guard. So, like I say, I'm just excited because since July I had COVID-19, I don't want anybody to feel bad for me at all because I don't feel bad for myself. So, it's motivation. And hopefully somebody sees this. I don't know who's going to see it. I don't even care what the result is. Even if I lose, hopefully it motivates somebody who want to get off the couch. Somebody who want to just a, attain something that they never obtained. So for me, I feel I already won because I'm getting out there. And that's what I tell my students, I'm gonna tell you guys. Sometimes it's not about the result, it's not about the medal. Yeah, it'll be nice, but the fact that I'm willing to step out there and just try, just put my jujitsu to the test, you know, against some of the best guys in the world, that makes me feel good about myself. So I just want everybody to see. When you get ready for something, you want to give it your all. And then you don't feel bad about losing. If God's just better than you that day, but it's not going to ever be because of lack of conditioning, lack of uh, physical strength. It's not going to be because of that. If a guy beats me, and I've been beat before, it's going to be because he had a better day. But the worst feeling in the world, in my opinion, is if you go into some half step. If you go into something and you're not fully prepared. You give your best performance, 
and it's just not your day, you gotta feel good about it. And that's what my goal is. I know guys look at this machine and think it's a woman's machine. <laughs> I get it, but there's a, a few sweeps that I hit because of this machine. And people are like, man, you got a good squeeze. I, I mean, I work lower body all the time. Get a stretch and a squeeze. Muscles are so important uh, in jiu-jitsu, particularly if you do triangles, you do arm locks, and if you play guard. You gotta really develop these inner thigh muscles. You know, and you'll, you'll, you'll see, especially like new people, when you start, you actually feel sore right through here when you've been drilling triangles and stuff like that. Because you're developing that muscle. And it also helps you, like I say, with all types of sweeps. So, do not neglect the legs, fellas. Doing the pans and I'm just getting in the zone. I'm just really trying to lock in, get my diet right, make sure I'm, I'm at the weight. My weight's really good right now, but I'm still a few weeks out. So I gotta make sure I'm taking plenty of water, working a lot of takedowns. Because what I noticed, because in my division, which is Master Five, super heavy black belt, you have five minutes. So what you typically see is guys really grip fighting, um, jockeying for position, and sometimes by the thinnest margin, you can lose a fight. Guy actually gets in on a takedown, you trip, anything can happen. Like, But the good thing about jujitsu is the fight is not over till it's over. I could be down 20 to zip, but you never know. You're gonna see it at the pen. Somebody's gonna land a submission. Somebody gonna be down on points, and you're gonna think, oh man, this person should win. You turn around, you look, ref raising the other guy's hand. I'm gonna tell you what happened. He didn't give up. But look at some of the guys, man, that come out of, come out of Midwest. That's gonna be at that tournament. They're gonna do really well. And it all starts, that's why I encourage, too, anybody watching this, support your local tournament. You know, I want to thank you guys for supporting the Buckeye State for so many years. We couldn't have it this year because of COVID, but we're going to be back next year. Toledo Open uh, with Chris Blanky, um, Dustin Ware. You know, he's got the AGC down there. And you got Fuji tournaments, you know, popping up, you know, everywhere. So there's always opportunities to compete. And then, oh, then there's also Team East Coast. They have a, they have a nice tournament. Uh, Chad Coon and those guys. I want to shout out all my brothers from Michigan. See, I don't want to miss nobody, so I'm not even going to say no names anymore. But just know, everybody from Michigan, everybody from Indiana, all my brothers in Illinois, Ohio, Pennsylvania. Because I, I know a lot of y'all been looking at the sign-ups, man. Let's go out there and, and just have fun and, and do what we've been trained to do.
All right, um, first of all, I want to thank all my students, all my affiliates. Um, man, I want to thank all my professors that I've ever had. Uh, Chris Blanky, Salo, Shanji, my professor now, Professor Caprito, who is, man, you know, he really, really helped me so much establish the, the Brasa brand, Deion Thompson Jiu Jitsu, you know, and that's what I love about him, you know, and uh, he definitely deserves, just like people say, man, no matter what happens to me, man, when my professors show up, I pay homage, you know what I mean, because he's the reason why I was able to to obtain a, a goal that I've set for myself for a lot of years. Um, and like I said, I know people saw the emotion. I, it was crazy because I didn't know the camera people had caught that. So then when I come in and my students they made that poster, everybody knows I'm not I'm not a emotional guy, you know, in terms of crying anyway. But you know, sometimes it happens. Sometimes it comes out, and uh, you know. It is what it is, but I was excited, uh, man, that week. And I'll admit, it was, it was very nerve-wracking. Um, you know, when you walk up to the venue, man, you start getting those butterflies. And, and all I was thinking about was uh, pretty much my students. You know, I want to, to do my best for them just so they can see that if they <coughs> have goals and no matter how long it takes, that they can reach them. Um, definitely shouts out to my opponents, uh, Mike Romero, who it could have went either way, to be honest with you. Mike is a very, very tough black belt um, out of Arizona. <coughs> Mika, shouts out to him. Mika is the second best guy in the world in our, in our division, in the super uh, heavy black belt master five division. He wasn't 100%, but the fact that he stepped out there Man, that's, that's warrior status too. <clears throat> so, and like I said, I um, it could have went either way. I, I know I prepared for it uh, physically, mentally, and spiritually. You know, there was a, I'm sure Vicente gonna watch this. I kept playing that, uh, that Kirk Franklin Lovely Day <laughs> song over and over and over. And I don't know why, you know, my mom was in the gospel uh, when she was here, I repeated my mom's. And, uh, I just felt like listening to gospel. It's the first time I've ever done it. Usually I listen to, you know, I listen to hip hop, you know, like everybody else that gets me going. But there was something about that song that really spoke to me. Um, and like I say, just and shout out to all the students, you know, shout out to Marcus, who went out there on the bad arm, Sasha, uh, Vicente, I mean, uh, Nicole, everybody else. Because the, the cool thing about it, was everybody was, was watching on Flow Grappling. Um, like I said, I know Kevin Smith came through here, actually helped me prepare a little bit. Juan, Randy, those guys are from the, uh, Kevin's from Ribeiro and um, Juan and Randy, they're from uh, the Badger style. And that's why I just try to tell everybody that it's such a unique bond. I had Brad from GF Team, GF Team's right down the street. Brad and BJ were on the side. I, and it's funny, I was hearing voices but then when I watch the tape, I see those guys literally cheering for me, you know, helping me with instruction. I'm like, that, man, that meant so much because it was at that time that the patch didn't matter. It was, we're all from Ohio. We're all, you know, out here represent for each other. And that was what I really loved. You know, I was watching them too. I was cheering for everybody I knew. And there is a saying, you know, and God says, you know, when you, when you give, you get it back. And a lot of people think that means money. This when you you sow seeds, when you when you give that. And I like to think of myself as a giver. I like to think that I have imparted something throughout my years on this earth to give something back, whether it be through coaching, whether it be through what, whatever the case may be. And you know, and they say God loves a cheerful giver. And people who know me know I love to see people be successful. That's what I love, you know. I'm not, I'm not a hater in that in that fashion, you know. Oh, it didn't happen to me. No, I want people to really 
achieve goals. It makes me feel good. And I learned that a while ago um, because my son's like that. You know, he's, he's always happy for people. My stepson's like that. He's always happy for people. And then I look at what their life is turning out to be. So message to anybody, be happy for people. You know, it's funny, uh, Mike, Mike tagged me in a post and I, I gotta tell you this funny story. It goes out to show us how small the world was. Apparently I was more nervous than I thought. When I went to go get changed, I changed in the ladies' <laughs> bathroom. And I, it's Mike's teammate. A young lady comes out of the stall. I'm changing, got my headphones. She's like, excuse me. I'm looking at her, she's looking at me. I'm like, looking at her, what are you doing here? She's looking at me, she's like, you know it's the ladies' room. I was like, Ma'am, I'm sorry, I'm, you know, completely, completely in my zone. And then when Mike uh, tagged me in a picture, I saw the same lady. I was like, oh man, I, you know, it was kind of embarrassing. But nonetheless, and then Mike's coach comes up to me, you know, he said, hey man, you know, you handled yourself with class and, and grace and that emotion was, was really, I was happy for you. And that was coming from another guy's coach. So that made me feel really good. Um, one thing I try not to do is show anybody up. Um, I don't like to offend people by my posts. I don't allow my students to do it either, you know. When you win, win graciously because we're all gonna lose at some point. And you can't be that loser that makes an excuse. You can't say, uh, well, he, he, he was bigger than me or he has more stripes than me. It doesn't matter, you know. You give the guy credit, he had a better day that day. Your day's gonna come if you stick with it.